One of the country's most successful inventors, who is a legend in a loo break, is back. The man whose name is synonymous with the toilet, Sir Thomas Crapper, is brought alive by Kent-based author Dr. Robert Hume in his new book, Lavatory Legend. To celebrate the 100-year anniversary of his death, Hume looks at how Crapper rose from a poor background to become one of the most successful businessmen in the whole of the British Empire, even installing flush toilets for the royal family. If you think of all the changes which have happened even in my lifetime, um, you know, toilets in in aeroplanes, uh, the Superloo, which opened at Leicester Square uh, when I was, uh, at, you know, at school. Um, huge changes, um, the mind boggles. Uh, I'm sure Thomas Crapper, if he'd still been around today, would be at the uh, forefront of the market. Um, there he was, you know, uh, striving for in further improvements, perhaps running uh, showrooms or developing the toilet in, in ways that hadn't been dreamt of before. As head of history at Clarendon House Grammar in Ramsgate, Dr Hume has been spreading his enthusiasm to his students by helping them construct a giant toilet made out of wood and paper mache. I was interested in writing a book connected with toilets because my students love anything connected with toilets. So when we study the Roman toilets and look at them on Hadrian's Wall, they love all the details about the sponges on sticks um, and the fact that the toilets um, were next to one another without any cubicle partitions. They, they have an insatiable interest in the subject. I mean, you could probably design whole schemes of work around it and have terms of, of lessons on it and they'd still want more. Um, he died in Annalise in Kent and um, it was a hundred years since he died in 1910. If it wasn't for him then we'd still have leaky toilets and have to go outside for, to go to the toilet. Dr Hume enlisted the help of some fellow academics in constructing the model lavatory. Well, um, Rob emailed me in the uh, summer holiday and he said could I get involved in the project to make a, a toilet, a large, very large toilet to commemorate uh, the death of Thomas Crapper. And uh, first of all I told him I thought he was potty. Um, then I came, <coughs> came up with a number of designs and I didn't think very many of them would work so they were down the pan. Well I think it's very important that um, girls understand, girls in particular of course, understand how things are made and how easy it is to make things and that's my role as the head of technology is to get them fully involved in making things and working out how, how to make things and trying to make successful things as, as you can see. Most people think that it's quite awkward to like make a toilet because it just sounds so odd but no it's just like you make loads of sculptures in life it would just be the way it is. I could probably make anything now. Andrew Georgian is a trainee teacher and knows how important it is to inspire younger generations to learn. The only reason I became a teacher is because I was inspired by those teachers that it taught me and I felt so enthralled by their, their lessons and, and so excited by going to their lessons and being, wow, this is, this is a great, great to be in. I mean, I'm a I come from a design tech background, so my design lessons were just full of creating and making and running, a, well, not running around like aimlessly, but we were running around and we were making things and we were getting stuck into projects. If, if the resources are there for you um, and the teachers are willing and enthusiastic for their subject, then they can inspire any student. Well, when we first started, I thought, oh, yeah, um, we're just making a, like, just a normal toilet, but then when Dr Hume actually explained like the whole concept to us, and it was actually like really fun and like to see how it changed, and it's really like interesting to see it. 